Notwithstanding, it is prophesied that oppression make the wise man mad. And who is madder than my servant, said the Lord, our God, Rastafari. Therefore, therefore, two prophecy, it come to the conclusion that the Rastafarians are a delirious group of people. We're mad. We want to go to Africa and we call Rastafari God and more things than this. But if the world should take a look at it and we ask them certain questions like if I have the right to own God, the world will answer me yes. For God is owned by everyone as them father. Yet still wish God is owned by who? Our God Rastafari has proven to the world that there is certain recognition he paid unto us who won him. So therefore, since it is on the dungle, the Honorable Marcus Gave prophesy that this thing shall rise up. And 1960 it was on the dungle. This thing rise up, and 61 it rise and leave and go to Africa. And in 69, when them come back again, to carry the movement a little further. Is the dongle again we come back? We go and read Psalm 9. Those who know it can say. That when His Majesty was crowned 1930, this is what everyone chants. I will praise Thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all Thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in Thee. I will sing praise to Thy name, O Thou Most High. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause, thou satest in the throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the Eden, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities, their memorials is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name, Rastafari, will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast thou not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion, the clear among the people is doing. When he make it in the Christian for blood, he remembered them. He forgot not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, consider my troubles which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou art lifted me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the days of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. They then are sunk down in the pit that they made, in the net which they did their own foot take. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the works of his own hands, Agiang Dila. The wicked shall be turned into hell on all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, our God, rock. Let not men prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, our God, rock. That the nations may know themselves.
and their wives, princes of the church. By now, they've probably lost count of the number of times they've waited here at Addis Ababa Airport 
for the same extraordinary man. In a moment, he'll step from the door of this aircraft to a scene that's even more familiar to him. And here he comes. The legend in person. One of the world's best-known figures and faces, and one that most of us know least about. Father figure of modern Africa and relic of a vanishing world, feudal despot and reforming monarch, one of the last claimants to the divine right of kings, the legendary descendant of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, elect of God, king of kings, emperor of Ethiopia. And then we have another hour. Yeah, we're willing. So hopefully we can get to two full hours tonight. And there's a lot of content, a lot of things to get to. And um, uh, give thanks for, for uh, being in the presence for ones once who were gathered in the first portion. Uh, some blessed revelations. A lot of the things were tied into this Torah portion, number 26, uh, Shemini. And um, again, uh, that you know, a great reference was made uh, from uh, one of our ancient Ethiopic manuscripts, um, part of our um Ethiopic documents, the Kibbutz and the guests, uh, Queen of Sheba and only son Minilik. Um, the English version, if you if you can, the, the best version is by uh, by Budge. Anyway, so um, and also the the significance significance of uh, the number eight as well. So anyway, let's push forward again. We have about two hours left, and uh, we seek to open up the lines. And um, let me bring forth. Uh, we have the Rebbe again is joining us, uh, Rossi Donis at the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. Uh, RespiratoryGrandation dot com. Respiratory Sabbatical on the YouTube. I, and I give thanks. I to bring uh, bring Rebbe on, and also Brother Yifti also is here because I know uh, we got cut out in the in a previous portion. So um, to the Rebbe Rashi Donis Tefari, I agree the I. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Tein Esli. Give thanks, greetings. Oh Shalom, Shalom. <coughs> yes, I I was enjoying the the musical um, while while listening to the to the music. Uh, to the dance, I was um, meditating on something that I said in the previous portion. I know we had got, um, you know, we came to the fullness of the previous portion while on um, the covenant of guests and the link that Wendem Yifti had brought out from uh, seven Second Samuel seven ten and seven ten to seven eleven. Just remember seven eleven Second Samuel, where. Um, he always says that he will plant, you know, he, he's going to put Israel in his own place, even though if you look at it, you know, you say you have to question that because all of that was to get into the land of Canaan. But then he says something furthermore, he will put them in their, a place of their own. And the real connection, as the brother brought out, so I, I think eloquently just to note that and just highlight that, because no doubt if he was reading along, you know, more or less, you say, wait, hold on for a moment. You know, I thought they were already in the place, but there is, there is the connection. But something that the eye brought out uh, was um, about, about Aaron and his sons and what happened. And I, I don't know, I got I to gotta admit that, you know, we talked in the dab and the bihu and strange fire, and they burned strange fire, and they got burned up, you know, and say it like that. And true, say it like that. But then if you really start to meditate on it, I think you really brought a really interesting, um, and, and this you do this sometimes, Zawadi, you know, you'll, you'll bring it up and you'll be like, okay, well, we're going to go on to such and such. But <laughs> that, that point, yeah, you laughing. I, I hear you laughing. <laughs> You laughing, right? <laughs> no, a job laughs. Yeah, because I was meditating and I was like, you know, that's so true. All this did happen in the same like the same day, you know? It's it's, it's like something heavy and he still had to function, um, big brother Aaron, you know, he still had to function in under the old covenant as as the high priest. And most mm-hmm got angry. You know, Moses has this uh <laughs> Moses has this habit 
of getting angry. And we know, you know, those of us who are familiar, we know that um, one more time, you know, there's a time he got angry and that, that actually cost him getting in the promised land with the people. But we do know in the new covenant that he didn't make it into the promised land because he shows up with Elijah on uh, Mount Tabor with Yeshua transfigured. So, you know, he didn't make it in with the people, but we do cite him, you know, and Peter and and the other disciples, they did cite him in the promised land. But it was a meditation on, it's the, it's the, it's the human part. It's, it's the hearticle part. I mean, think about it. Aaron just lost two of his sons. And before we think that, you know, these sons were like, you know, so wicked and bad and everything like that. No, it was just that they they were presumptuous, you know. And if it were not for the grace of the King of Kings Christ, you know, as the New Testament Torah portion, I think, puts it very, very eloquently. And I don't want to go off of my own memory, but I want to actually just bring up this word right here in uh, in. Hebrews chapter 8 where it says Right here We have such an high priest Kahin HaGadol Lika Kahinat Morinya Who is set On the right hand Of the throne of the Majesty of his majesty In the heavens now this is the new Covenant this is Yeshua this is Isis Yesus That is set at the right hand Because the Psalm 110 which speaks of the order of Melchizedek, it says, and Adoni, Lord, at thy hand, speaking of Abba Father, that his right hand is the Son, you know, shall strike through enemies, you know, in the day of his wrath. And that is what, you know, that is still what is to come as this time of grace comes to fulfill, because we already are in the eighth millennium. The new millennium, according to the to Wahido, Ethiopic, true, Ethiopic, true Orthodox Church, the new millennium, this millennium now is called the eighth millennium. And the the date, the date is uh, 7,507. And the new millennium actually began at 7,500. And 7,500 was about seven years ago. And that was 2007, and it's known as the Cementenial, the Shemeni Cement Eight, uh, Cementenial, um, the eight thousand years, which they describe, according to Orthodox Ethiopian Orthodox teaching, as being the last days, the eighth millennium, that the the the, the five thousand five hundred two thousand. 2,000 plus 7, 2,000 plus 5,500 is 7,500. So the Ethiopic calendar is accurate and becomes a very important timepiece when we recognize what we are now in so-called uh, 2015. Ethiopic time, short count, is 2,007. Long count is 7,507. This age that we are in, the beginning, the beginning of, we're in the eighth day. Remember that, that, that of day. We're in the eighth dawning right now of the eighth day. You know, within the, the great eschatological context of it. And so, therefore, study of the eighth day here in the Torah, I think, is significant. But the point about and his um, sons, because at the end of the chapter, I think it's chapter 10, at the end of that particular chapter, there's a discourse going back and forth between Moses and Aaron. And um, just to bring the eye a little bit of it, because I give thanks for, you know, job bless I and I Wyndham, I and I brother Sizzler Kalanji on his earth strong and give thanks for his music and, and his his uh, inspiration and, and the word sound that he has shared and given to I and I in the King of Kings, Kanamawi Hala Selassie name. And also, by you playing those those relics, gave I and I a little bit more time to kind of go over some notes because I kept thinking of what you said, you know, that, you know, what it was for Aaron, 
Because remember, Aaron is the high priest. But then also Aaron, if you think about it, um, Aaron is a type of the anti-type. This is how they speak of the type and the anti-type of Yeshua. In other words, you first have the, you first have the, um, the, the high priest, who also had he, he lost he lost some sons, right? But then also, you see that also in the new covenant too, with some of the early followers of Yeshua HaMoshiach. I mean, even in a sense, with, with with Iscariot on a certain level. You know, because if we look at, if we compare it for a moment, both of them, or the two sons and even as carried and even others, where did they go wrong? Was it really just about the fire? The fire is a symbol there, but was it about the strange fire? Well, to a degree, they took the fire off of the altar and they brought it in their senses. They kind of, no doubt, did what in their time was done elsewhere. You know, in the rituals or other services. This is I think where the key point that we have in this poor portion that we can apply as a <clears throat> apply as a Rhema word a Rhema word to I and I in this present time. Let's just turn to Colossians two and twenty three and I wanna also give you a little point of order with something that the Jews and others have wrong about um uh I'll bring that out. Um, just remind me about the long hair bit. Another, it's another long hair bit, you know, where they talk about that the priests are not supposed to enter into the town. Ta- oh, Rebbe, if you're there, all right. We seem we have we lost we have lost the Rebbe there. Uh, a little bit of a disconnection problem. I'm sure you will call forward. Um, I was just about to get about to get into uh Colossians um chapter two verse twenty three. And I was just in the middle of pulling that up and it's seeing that the uh the audio and so you know, so now uh <clears throat> uh dropped out and I know you'll call back in a few seconds. But um but yeah, it was just uh part of just continuing the notes I guess, what what I was trying to bring out because you know, as uh, they had just done the rituals and offering and slain the animal and everything else and gave up the off- offering. And then, you know, and Yahweh had shown himself to the people, you know, right before that. And then all of a sudden, you know, the brothers came up and offered strange fire and consumed in fire, you know, right in front of their face. So, you know, it might have been a, you know, it's a dreadful thing to, to really witness in that sense. Anyway, uh, Rabbi's uh, Rabbi's back. I give thanks, uh, Rabbi. Uh, shalom if you're there. Greetings. Oh, shalom, shalom. I don't know what point that I not was able to bring forward, but did you hear the point yeah, about we, the we, next we, part of the commandments? We had just gotten to uh, Colossians two uh, twenty three, and then you uh, you had another point you were going to bring out, but I'll remind you if if you forgot. Oh. Already. All right, all right. So did you were you able to go through and by read uh, Colossians uh, two uh, twenty three? No, we just got into that point, so we can take over. Okay, okay. So I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll continue with Colossians two and twenty-three. Because there's a, there's another long here point. I noticed something. This, you know, these, these, these other ones in our these converts, always speaking something about long here. I always notice, always saying something about long here. And then when you check the text, it doesn't say anything that they say. And it, you know, they do all kind of somersaults and backflips to try to make that seem so. But anyway, let's get to this point right here about um, strange fire. And, and this is largely based on the the Schofield um, um, study notes where it says um, concerning the sin of Nadab and Abihu was in acting in the things of God, things of Jah, without seeking the mind of Jah. Now, Ketamala Hadassalasi says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Right, so if we are to bring glory to His name, then we should seek that which He glorifies in. I mean, this is according to His word. Now, what's interesting about Nadab and Abihu, as I mentioned before, is that no command had yet been given 
concerning um, the Aishans of how the Aishans was supposed to be kindled. So this is considered will worship, and here we're going to 2 and 23 of Colossians, Colossians chapter 2 at verse uh, 23, which is the last uh, the last uh, verse in this um, chapter right here. It says, um, I think a context is probably necessary here. So um, let's just begin with verse 18, if if. If I can beseech the eye, then let's begin with verse 18 right here. And verse 18 from 18 Colossians, verse 18. Subscription, a warning against false mysticism. A warning against false mysticism. It says, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind or carnal mind. I and I and I want no carnal mind, right? The Rastafari chant. So we can even see even right there we have a a a a a, a light, an illumination that if we follow the light to its source, we'll find the glory of his majesty, the B I B L E. Verse 19 says, and not holding the head or the ras, not holding the ras or the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourished ministereth or serveth and knit together increaseth with the increase of ha Elohim. And there's some key words here because it's speaking of the head, Christ is the head. Right, the King of Kings is the head of the church, as Christ is the head. Christ in His kingly character, saying, "The body, we are the body, the true church of the firstborn, the joints and the bands, having nourished ministereth." Right, so each of us minister and serve in the body of the King of Kings and Christ. Each other, we are knit together, and then the, the increase, and that increase, increase. It says, increaseth with the increase of Elohim. And the key point about the eighth and the eighth, and, and, and when we break down that word and we go into the context, is that idea of blessing and the idea of increase. In fact, the word barakat comes from the root abarakat, uh, um, which basically means to increase. That's basically the idea of blessing is the idea of increase. So when it says in, with the increase of God, blesseth with the blessing of Ha Elohim. Something I've 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 been wanting to speak on how we will, you know, use this term bless up, bless out, bless in, bless this, bless. You know, it's 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 it's, it's, it's almost like Nadab and Abihu in a sense. Though we're in grace, and that's the good news there, we're under grace and not under law. Because if we're under law, then fire would also burn us as well. We have to recognize what dispensation we're in, right? And, you know, um, give thanks and praise because in Abihu and Adab's time, there wasn't this grace. They were under law. Right, and therefore, if there was no law concerning that, it's like why you're doing that. But instead, the fire burned them. Right, so we move on to verse 20, a warning against asceticism. It says, "Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world." Now we're not dead, but from the rudiments of the world, the operation of the world and worldliness, we're dead to that. We we live to job. Rastafari, but we're dead to Babylonian nonsense. So, wherefore, if ye, I and I, and we be dead with Christ in his kingly character from the rudiments of the world, why? As though living in the world. Notice it says we're dead, right? But we're living. So we have to understand the context of it and not f- fray away and shy away from a word. Oh, five on that, 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 that. Yeah, but then you're not giving glory to Father because it's like Nadab and Abihu. You, you know, you're doing something against the command or against his, his will. It says, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? 
taste not, touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Now, some fools out there who pick up the Bible, they'll say, oh, this is the commandments here. Which commandment said touch not, taste not, handle not? It clearly is saying these all perish with the using because these are the commandments, doctrines of men. So men and people will command you, they'll have teachings, but are these the commandments of Adonai Ja or Astafari? Are they the teaching of his majesty? Here we go, verse 23. Which things have indeed a shoe? To show, they look, a show of wisdom, in will worship, just exercising one's will. That's where they say the do what thou wilt, right, shall be all of the law. And that is true. Do what thou wilt is law. But unfortunately, it's the law of sin and death, right? It's the law of sin and death that Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8 really expounds on. So these sort of things... Right, indeed have a shoe of wisdom. They look wise, a worldly wisdom, in will worship and humility. TV with the Catholics and people go to the Basilica and they pray for mercy and for, you know, the grace of the grace of Yeshua, yes, it's according to their best understanding. These are the people. They've been fooled, right? And they're told to crawl on their knees up these steps and all of this. You know, it's, it's, it's stuff like that. That seems very, you know, humble. And we'll say they should be blessed for that. But they're not because that is not what he commanded. Will worship and humility neglecting the body, not in honor satisfying of the flesh. This is a very interesting teaching right here because we're told, well, we're, you know, we're supposed to, you know, you, you have ascetics and even certain ones who beat and torture the body, like certain priests that believe in whipping themselves. They whip their physical flesh. Somehow they're going to become more spiritual. Not. So this is a connection right here which I find to be very, very interesting that the Schofield actually brings out right here about the strange fire. It was will worship, which often has a show. It looks, it's mainly done for looks. Like when Yeshua said, when we do our alms or what, let's not do it to be seen by men. Of course, men and people might see you, but it's not with the intent to be seen by men. You know, so men praise us because therefore we already have our reward the people who already praise us instead of having our praise of Abba Father in Yeshua's name. So this is the Dab and Abihu is an example that typifies the use of a carnal, a fleshy, the way we think. You know, it seems right in our own, like the Proverbs say, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is death. Right? The carnal means to kindle the fire of devotion or devotion and praise. So that's the aspect of, well, what is the what is the iritical, the overstanding of the sin of Nadab and Abihu when we break it down to the basic principle? Well, I mean, it makes sense that if the commandment was not giving, then what were they doing? Now, were they wickedly intended? Were they the worst of all? It's like when the Tower of Siloam fell. Remember in the New Testament, the tower, a whole tower fell down, and he killed like 18 people. And the disciples came to Yeshua like, like you know, almost like, you know how we would, like if something had happened to people, we would think like the is on themselves. And Christ said, no, 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 it was, it's not about all that. But you too, that can happen to you too if you don't, if you don't repent. You know, recognize the time. So these things, I look at Nadab and Abihu, even though at first I looked at them as to be like, you know, two wicked, naughty boys. But they were not that in that sense. They were just like I and I if we do not wait for his sense, you know what I mean, and, and study his way and wait for his command and seek to do something that might be good in the eyes of men and people and be utterly disastrous right, for ourselves and also in the eyes of the Almighty. Now, how that connects 
with uh, Samuel, with David bringing up the ark, I think is is so is so ideal because the story of David's new cart and of it is. Blessing, barakat, the blessing, does not follow even the best intentions in service of Jah. What's the service? It's the ministry. And I minister. You know what I mean? In whatever way, whatever way we serve through I and I service, right, to the Father, but also to our fellow man, to our brethren and our sistering of the household of Rastafari, and to I and I fellow man, as his majesty said, to do all in our power to see to it that the good news, right, is shared and is spread with those who have not had the benefit of hearing the good news of the King of Kings in Christ. So the lesson here is that blessing does not follow even the best of intentions in service of Jah, except as that service, except as that ministry is rendered in Jah's way or is rendered in the way that is pleasing to him according to his glory, according to the heretical understanding of the Bible. So it is a constant point there, a point of failure and in fact that could be a summary of the old covenant that much of the failure of the Israelites was based on that thing doing what right mind and totally avoiding the will express will commandment for so given Explicit directions on how the ark was to be carried, but we find that David, of course, doing things, for example, in church. We say, I and I is church, cool, and we want to do ministry, so we look at the blue skirt churches out there, do people, and we say, oh, that's good. They seem to be, they got a lot of people, they got a, a big following, or whatever. and we adopt that when John has already given us specific. In- Now, it says here, I think this is the key, that the church, and even the church of the firstborn, I and I, Rastafari, is full of the Philistine or the Philistine ways of doing service to Christ. May we not be full of the Philistine ways of doing service to Christ and his kingly character, brothers and sisters, because I think this is of this Torah portion. It it not not inaugurates. I don't like that word because actually augury means birds. It's it's when they used to split open birds in pagan and heathen cultures to see whether people would have good fortune or bad fortune. So it's really the initiation of the priesthood. It's really the beginning of the ministry of the priesthood right here. So at this very beginning of the ministry of the priesthood, we already have failure, error and even death because of, um, in a sense, disobedience. Because disobedience at, at, at its root means not hearing, right, not shimmering, and, and not working, also impatient too. Because in a couple of more chapters, basically have, right, when we look at chapter 16, just to go to chapter 16 really quickly right here, Leviticus chapter 16, um, 16 and I think it's 12, where the command then came forward in 16 and 12, it says, And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before Yahweh, and his hands full of sweet ancients beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Now, many, much of the details of what happens in the Dab and the Bihu are, are the general idea is that they took fire from before the Lord and they went in and they got burned by the fire of Yahweh. But here it gives the specific instruction. And notice this, it says his hands what? Full. This said you have a cup, a little bit? No, his hands what? Full of what kind of incense? Any kind of incense? No, sweet incense, right? Beaten small. So does that mean he would have his hands full of sweet incense that's not beaten small? 
we have attention to the details. Why would John reveal such details, right? Even his majesty, right, in his revelation to we, if you really study it, he is about the details because the details oh. is what, huh? Uh, Rabbi, not, not to cut the eye, Rabbi, but just reading along with the eye, that, that, that verse, uh, Levit- Leviticus sixteen twelve. Uh, where it says beaten there, that word, the Hebrew word for, for that for beaten is uh, dock, and it means uh, crushed. So sweet, well, sweet ice is crushed. <laughs> is dock? Uh, dock, D-A-Q. D-A-Q, uh, that, that is the dock. word for disciple. That's the root of the word for deca. Deca, it's really, the, uh, well, they would say dock because they don't have the is and the fidel, so they don't have pure, pure vowel sounds, but really it will be deca, deca. Deck, like deck, deck, uh, um, and deck, uh, means to to pulverize or refine. Wow, beautiful, my uh. brother. Beaten. So we even have there, you know, the Hebrew term, right? But that Hebrew word is also found in the Ethiopic, even in the term for disciple, which is deck, uh, mesmor. Mesmor is a psalm. Deck, uh, can be interpreted to be a child, like dekika. Dekika would mean children. You know the idea, I guess, of small plus. You refine this into the part of the discipline of refining, you know, something into the child. You know, like like train up a child in the way that he should go is a part of that deck. Like you deck him, not deck him, literally deck him. But you know what I'm saying is to beat that truth. This says, when you rise up, you shall speak this. When you lay down, you shall speak this. You know what I mean? You shall speak it continually, itinually, and in a sense, would beat it into us. You know what I'm saying? Not literally beat it into us, but it's like when our parents and grandparents would say certain things over and over, and we get tired of hearing them. Then when we grow up and maybe have our own children or have experiences, then we'll have this eureka moment. You know what I mean? Like the lights in our heavens will shine, and we're like, oh, now we're over. But that word there, beaten, thank you, my brother, beaten, small. So you see the detail here, and 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 bring it within the veil. Now, I, I didn't read anything about no veil in, in Leviticus chapter 10. I didn't read anything about hands full, not a little bit of Aishans, but it says hands full of, not just any Aishans, but hands full of sweet Aishans. Because all I see right here, in, in the Dab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them, his censer, and put fire therein, and put in fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. In fact, it doesn't even tell us where they got the fire from. He doesn't even tell us where they got the fire from, right? And um, what about the incense? And they put incense. Notice, the scripture is very specific. There's a difference between Aishans and sweet Aishans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's a difference between, you know, um, 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 Aishans and high grade. You know what I mean? There's a difference there, you know? And there went out fire from Yahweh and devoured them. And they died before for Yahweh. But now here in Leviticus 16 and 12, and once again, make a note of that, brothers and sisters, the word that Brother Zawadi brought out, um, the dak or dek, you know, um, which means to be beaten small. So in the sense of the disciple, in the Ethiopic, in Haile Selassie's mind state, in the Christ mind state, we as disciples are those who the Psalms, are beaten into, are refined into us. That's why we call it Davidic worship. You know, and that's why in this Torah portion we've gone from the tabernacle of Moses, which was a more solemn and somber and even bloody event, to the tabernacle of David, which is about joy and about praise. I want you to make a note of that because he says he will raise again the tabernacle of who? Does, does, does John say he's going to raise again the tabernacle of Moses? No. He says he's going to raise again the tabernacle of David. <laughs> you know what I mean? The tabernacle of David, right? And don't don't be a Michael either, a Michael. I'm not talking about 
Michael, male Michael, but the female Michael, David's wife, uh, first wife. That was that was complicated. Verse 13 says, and he shall put the incense upon the fire before Yahweh. Notice the order. That the cloud of the Aishans, the incense, may cover the, what? The mercy seat. Did you read into my mercy seat in chapter 10? Right, the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. Right, I'm just going to pause there for a moment. Now, the human interest is what I picked up from Brother Zawadi that was even even more interesting, um, not more interesting, but interesting as well, is how at the end of the chapter, Moses gets a little bit angry with um he gets a little bit angry with uh, uh, uh Aaron's two other sons you know he gets angry with Aaron's two other sons in verse 16 of chapter 10 and Moses diligently sought now actually in the Hebrew it's like he he sought and he sought he inquired and he inquired and there's a little kind of a write up I don't know if we have time to get into it, but anyway, just an overview. He sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burned. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place, seeing it is most holy? And God have given it to you to be as the duty of the congregation, to make atonement for them before Yahweh. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in with the, within the holy place. He should indeed have eaten it in the holy place. And it, right? Now, remember, he was angry, right? There are three or four times that Moses gets angry, and it seems as though he forgets the law. Remember what the scripture says, the wrath of man, you don't, you don't get anger management. The wrath of man work not the righteousness of God. In other words, the wrath of man, you know, does not work John's, John's righteousness. And we see a good example right here when he now gets angry with Aaron's two other sons. Now, this is what I thought about. Aaron now... You know, he's the high priest, uh, he's been anointed, consecrated, so forth and so on. But in the same day, he just lost um, two sons. He just lost two of his, his sons. And now Moses, he diligently sought. In other words, he started to investigate. He investigated and he investigated, right? And then he gives this kind of heated rhetoric, Right against the two sons and even Aaron. Now, notice this. And Aaron said to Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahweh. And such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of Yahweh? And then in the last verse it says, and Moses heard that. And Moses heard that he was, that that was very curious to me. So I had to kind of look that up a little bit. And just to share a little portion of this right here about um, this exchange that went on. Why he had eaten the sacrifice. Moses asked Aaron whether Perhaps the blood of the sacrifice had entered the innermost sanctuary. But Aaron answered that its blood had not entered into the inner sanctuary. Moses asked Aaron whether perhaps the blood had passed outside the sanctuary courtyard. But Aaron replied that it had not. Moses asked Aaron whether perhaps the priest had offered it in bereavement and thus disqualified the offering. But Aaron replied the sons had not offered it, Aaron had. Thereupon Moses exclaimed that Aaron should certainly have eaten it as Moses had commanded in Leviticus 10 and 18, that they should eat it in their bereavement. Aaron replied with Leviticus 10, 19 and argued that perhaps what Moses had heard 
was that it was allowable for those in mourning to eat the special sacrifices for the inauguration or the consecration of the tabernacle, but not the regular ongoing sacrifices. For if Deuteronomy 26 and 14 instructs that the tithe, which is of lesser holiness, cannot be eaten in the in mourning, cannot be eaten while mourning, how much more should that prohibition apply to sacrifices like the sin offering, which are more holy? When Moses had heard that argument, he replied with Leviticus 10.20, I mean, yeah, 10.20, that it was pleasing to him, and he admitted his error. See, that doesn't really come out in the English so much, so... Moses did not seek to excuse himself by saying that he had not heard the law from Elohim, but he admitted that he heard it, and they say that he had heard it and 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 had um and had forgotten it. It's just very interesting this exchange that kind of um went on, and I think the note right there is the anger, right? It's because of the anger. Right, involving Nadab and Abihu, Moses no doubt was angry. This is why it says in Leviticus 10:16 that he diligently inquired, inquiring he inquired for the goat of sin offering. Now the language indicates that Moses actually made two inquiries. One, if the priests had slaughtered the goat of the sin offering, why had they not eaten it? Two, if the priests were not going to eat it, why did they slaughter it? And immediately after, you see that catch-22 right there? Leviticus 10.16 reports that Moses was angry with who? Eleazar and with Ithamar, the two remaining sons of, of Aaron. Now, one of the teachings the Midrash had taught that through becoming angry, Moses forgot the law. And that there were three instances where Moses lost his temper and as a consequence forgot the law or forgot the teach, forgot the instruction. I think this is a point on anger. The two other instances with regard with regard to the Sabbath, Exodus sixteen twenty, and with regard to the purification of the unclean um, metal utensils in Numbers 31 and 14. But in this case, which involved Nadab and Abihu, because of his anger, Moses forgot the Torah or the instruction relating to those in the first stage of mourning, what's called in the Hebrew the Onen, the Onen, right, or Onen, that it is prohibited. It is prohibited, I repeat, it is prohibited for a bereaved person prior to the burial of his dead to eat consecrated or idle food. Aaron asked Moses whether he should eat the consecrated or the holy food on the day that his sons died. Aaron, he argued that since the tithe, which is of a lesser Holiness, sacredness is forbidden to be eaten by a bereaved person prior to the burial of his dead. How much more certainly must the the meat of the sin offering, which is more sacred, be prohibited to a bereaved person prior to the burial of their dead? Immediately after this, Moses heard Aaron's argument. He issued a proclamation to the Israelites saying that he had made an error in regard to the law, the Torah, and Aaron, his brother, came and taught him. Eleazar and Ithamar had known the law, but kept their silence out of deference to Moses. And as a reward, Ha Elohim addressed them directly along with Moses and Aaron. We find that in uh, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. When Leviticus chapter 11 verse 1 reports that Adonai spoke to Moses and Aaron saying to them, right, others taught this, that saying to them, the them there referred to Eleazar or Eleazar and to, to, um, to Ithamar. The point here being that Leviticus 10 and 19, that Aaron's sin offering was burned. 
and not eaten by the priests because Aaron and his remaining sons, the priests, were in the early stages of mourning. Remember, this just happened. That's the point I wanted to bring out to, to you, Brother Zawadi, that you touched on that. And I was thinking, like, wow, uh, you know, yeah, Nadab and Abihu, they, they made a grave mistake. But then what must it have been like for the father? In other words, what must it have been like for Aaron? True, Aaron is the high priest with a great honor. But in that day of that great honor, he had lost two sons. So no doubt he was in the early stages of mourning. And so thus this disqualified him from eating of the sacrifices. He said, and, and, and he was using also his high priest role, that they did, pointed out they did. Right there. So um, there's a little bit more on this, but I'm going to pause 10 verses 12 to 13 as well as 14 to 15, right, in connection with the sacrifices on the eighth day of the consecration of the tabernacle, the day on which Nadab and Abihu died. Now, some of the ancient sages and teachers of Torah, the rabbis, taught that Moses said, as Adonai commanded in Leviticus 10 and 13, to instruct that the priests were to eat the grain offering, what's called the minka, um, even though they were in the earliest stages of mourning. Now, the same teachers taught that Moses said, as commanded in Leviticus 10:18, in connection with the sin offering or the chatiat, the chatat offering, at the time that Nadab and Abihu had died, and the same sages taught that Moses said, as Yahweh commanded in Leviticus 10:15, to enjoin Aaron and the priest to eat the peace offering, which is the shalamim. Notwithstanding their mourning and Aaron's correction, Aaron basically correction of Moses. Now, here's what's so interesting. If only Aaron had corrected Moses later on with the whole incident of, of striking the rock. Aaron's correction of Moses in Leviticus 10.19, not just because Moses said so on his own authority, but because Elohim had directed it. So, brothers and sisters, this is what I would call um, a good example of what Aaron had did and how Moses even acknowledged it of the checks, the checks and balances. The point about the here, I'm not going to go through all of the six positive and 11 negative commands, but they take Leviticus 10 and 6. If you look at Leviticus 10 and 6, it says in 10 and 6, And Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Yitamar, his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes. Lest ye die, and lest wrath, rotted, come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, the entire Beta Israel, be well, the burning which Yahweh hath kindled. Now, some modern-day Jews and, and others, they say that this here should be interpreted as one of the negative commands. Namely, they misinterpret this, that it's a command not to enter the tabernacle with law. And I saw this in the book, and, and, and I, I was like, wow. Well, that's an error, and I struck it out. Because in checking with the Amharic, the phrase is rasachuhun atinchu, and the Hebrew doesn't even, you know, say anything about long here in that sense. What it really means is that they are not to enter the tabernacle and pluck the hair. If you look through the Old Testament sense, even Job, the book of Job and elsewhere, you know, people would, you know, in losing their loved one, sometimes they would bust out their hair. They would pluck out their hair. 
You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, you know, rip it, you know, that says render your heart and not your garment. You know, so there it says that they are not to enter. It says uncover your heads. That's what it says right there in the King James. But the King of Kings says, Rasachun Adinchu, which can literally be interpreted as your heads do not pluck. To say, you know, it's almost like when you bust out your locks or, you know, in mourning. Because this is all connected with the mourning. But um, some of the latter day Jews, they misinterpret this that a priest must not enter the temple with um, long hair, but it should be more properly interpreted with the other laws that a priest is not to defile himself for his his dead because he is holy, as the Nazarite now also bespeak that, that if one is to do that, then one has to kind of like, you know, do a full, according to the old, under the old covenant. So I just wanted to point that out there because, I was offended when I saw this and even found out that the King of Kings and even the Hebrew says nothing of the sort. So I just wanted to point that out to the wonder moch and the new covenant of the King of Kings in Christ. And I yield. Miss Ghana, give thanks, wonder moch. Oh, I mean, and I mean, give thanks, Miss Ghana. Um, that was a blessed, you know, because uh, I think as we, the translation is very important. And I give thanks for bringing that out concerning uh, the the hair part. Um, and, you know, the, the mis, you know, the uncover part, uncover not your heads. Uh, anyway, and, and not only that, no, but also the the others as well. And, oh, it just, <laughs> I give thanks for every, um, and, um, you know, Let's see what I what's the what I and our brothers and sisters have to add to the conversation tonight. Uh we have about uh eighteen minutes left of live time and another hopefully another hour y'all y'all yeah, willing. Let's go forth and bring forth some of our and our brothers and sisters that are gathered and uh include some of our and our fellow disciples in the in the reasoning in the uh, in the gathering. Um as you mentioned before, we're gonna bring forth some of the sisters first, uh so sisters to the front. And uh, big shout out to and I. Some of our and our brothers have gathered as well. We're going to shout, shout ones and ones. Uh, Brother Ray Bob, uh, Brother Mandela, give thanks. Brother Mandela, highly Jesus, give thanks. Look, look forward to uh, touching base with the eye. Um, Brother Dawid is also here. Brother Justin was here in the uh, previous uh, ga- gathering. Give thanks, Brother Justin. Um, Brother Aaron, of course, all the way from the UK. Brother uh, Absalom from I and I Rastafari Salt Committee. Brother Manai is here as well. Um, we have Brother Hayal Tefari, Brother Hezekiah, uh, Brother Habdi Gabriel is also here as well, as well as um, Ras John Farai. But again, give thanks, brothers, uh, brothers for your gathering, and uh, we look forward to, to getting to all ones the ones we're gathering within the time. And brothers, uh, I, I give thanks in advance for your patience as we bring forth some of our and I sisters, some of our uh, Ehit. Um, and it's been a long time. We, we haven't been able to touch uh, ones and ones, so... Uh, let's bring forth, uh, without further ado, I actually want to see if I can uh, greet uh, Sister Ayade. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, job best our connection tonight. Hopefully, we can get to one of the ones. Sister Ayade, if you're there, uh, greetings, Shalom, the family greets the eye. Greetings, are you there? Greetings, 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 I. Kneeling, hi, Lisa Lassie, first. King of Kings, Lord of Lord, Doctor and Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Yeah, I just full joy here in the item, bringing forth all this knowledge and teachings, and just falling I and I up more and more in the joy and the glory of the Most High. Is just oh, a joy and a pleasure every time. So more love, more strength, more joy, more eyes is more identity. Glory to glory until that great and terrible day when we look around and the wicked and the evil will be no more in earth. Eyes is justified. Amen, amen. Amen. Love. In our silence, society. 
Oh, it's just like the good thing. So for, uh, you know, I, I want to mention, yeah, because uh, you're always here with the family. And uh, I know t- sometimes time run, run out and we don't get to get to all ones that are gathered. But yeah, he has been a, a faithful supporter. And uh, um, uh, I remember some of the previous reasonings. And I, anyway, I give thanks for making it here tonight and for, for being able to put out a word sound to the family. And I give thanks for, you know, hopefully all is well with the eye. You know, I hope, hope all is well, you know, in the, the Shimata year. Yes, sir. Same love. Joy and oh, yes, sir. every time. Yes, I give thanks and, um, you know, <laughs> I always just love, love in the place, brothers and sisters. I give thanks. It's the idea. Uh, give thanks for your fellowship mm-hmm. and I look forward for more to, for, from the eye. Shalom to the eye. Um, I give thanks again, too. Uh, let's push push forward and again uh, see if we can get some of I and I uh, fellow ahead again. Uh, that was I and I sister side. They give thanks. Um, you have such a blessed gathering when you come together. And um, anyway, let's let's utilize the time that we have here and go forth. Um, sister Sister Deborah, are you there? Hopefully we uh, can connect as well, Sister Deborah. If you're there, the family greets you. Shalom, greetings. Sister Deborah. All right, so uh, we'll give ones ones uh, another go around, and then we'll push forward to I and I sister. Uh, give thanks to the sister as well, always gathering with us, and um, you know we uh, I touched base with her behind the scenes, and we were um, anyway. Let me just uh, bring sister sister Ruhama if you're there. Uh, hopefully it's, it, we have a proper connection. The family greets the eye. Shalom, greetings, sister Ruhama. Oh, Sister Rama, are you there? All right, so let's push forward again. Uh, give thanks to those two sisters uh, always uh, with us again. As, um, I know ones ones are listening. I know it's a late hour. It's almost you know it doesn't feel like it's late, but it is pretty late and uh, well early, really as it were. Anyway, but let's let's push forward again. And uh, uh, we also have uh, Sister Sophia was also here as well. So I believe she cut out, and Sister Monique. Um, from the previous podcast, and um, anyway, we'll push forward again and um, bring forward Sister Emmanuel, who's also here and bless us with, with her presence. I and I give thanks, uh, Sister Emmanuel, for there. The family greets the eye. Shalom. Give thanks. Greetings, Sister Emmanuel. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's try that one more time. Sister Manuel, are you there? I guess we're having uh, either either way. I give thanks to ones. But we, I know ones ones are, are on the line. Hopefully, I'm also. Uh, Ruby, are you are you are you? Am I audible? Can we hear? Yes, I. Yes, I. Oh, all right. Yes, I, <laughs> I want to make sure. You know, I, I see. Yeah, I, I I know ones and ones on the line. I just want to make sure if I'm. I don't know if I was uh, talking. Isla, Isla, early morning agitation. <laughs> <laughs> I know the meditation is sweet. You know, much, much has been revealed tonight. I didn't, I didn't expect it, but a, a lot of, uh, a lot of notes and revelations concerning uh, this uh, Torah portion. We didn't even get, get into the, uh, the foods, the clean and un- unclean and, and stuff like that. And so, anyway, um, let's push forward well, again. Well, we're in a new covenant. We already know that you don't uh, want no blood of bulls and goats. You don't want no bulls. <laughs> Blood and goat blood, you know what I mean? All he wants is the liberty of his son upon I and I, you know what I mean? Which is his life. Oh. Yes, I. Sister Emmanuel, are you there? Try one more time. I am here. I am Oh. <laughs> Give <me a> greeting. <laughs> Praise greeting, I Hello. <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought we just had her. Hello, <laughs> hello, sister. Sister Emmanuel? Oh, man, I hope that, I hope my Tehillim... No, no, can you hear I? I and I on the 505 line. Can you hear I now? Okay, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, 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 I and I on the res right now. My new tribe, res. So kicking it with creature. No, not creature, part of King Reacher K, we just got done from the studio, Roger Cal at Norville, just doing some music with Voltage, Voltage G. So, 
Big up Yaman. We were fighting to get the signal here. We're like out in the whatever, you know. We have some bars. And the family's at home listening in too at the five three O line. So maybe you're trying to tune in. So give thanks. Give thanks to Yeshua Hamashiach and this new covenant and this you know, I and I my I self just been going kind of like through this, you know, this study, you know, also looking at modesty in spirit and in spirit and continent, you feel, as well as clothing, you know. So then had the opportunity to speak to the window and just even these, you know, Second Samuel, especially looking at Second Samuel and the Mikael, Mikael, you know, situation with David, and even in a celebration, um, that's like a good word sound for all of us who are or have been are in relations where we're the new one in the covenant and we're trying to make sure that our children and our loved ones and our partners are coming in with us, you feel? Um, And sometimes in our happiness and in our exuberance, our significant other, or on the real, sometimes sometimes they are, uh, we are unequally yoked, and sometimes we don't want to let go of that. But I and I just saying from yes, I am. So I and I say just from this um this whole uh, meditation, you know, spirit just uh the Holy Spirit just what I I had some notes, but I don't want to take up too much time. But for us, sisters, to really work together, iron sharpen iron, build and really build this kingdom. So as the Wyndham said, the uh, King Man said, so that we can really know that we're little princesses and 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 trying and learning how to be queens in this new kingdom and covenant and knowing behavior and knowing order and knowing, you know, just like the scripture says in Hebrews where it's in our hearts, it's written in our hearts where no one has to tell I and I, you know, who, what spirit says because it's already written in our hearts and our minds. So on that, um, with this, sh- you know, and I, and I had meditated on the fact that it was a um, study and then the 26 plus Two is eight, and all that other, you know, meditations. I, I, and I wanted to bring that up, but I thought the Rebbe was going to be like, oh, back in first grade, <laughs> you know, so I didn't want to bring it up. So Rebbe, give thanks for bringing that up. But that's all I might just have to say from the Second Samuel. Um, let me see, chapter. I think it's a, a verse, chapter sixteen, or verse. Can someone bring it up? I think it's verse twenty-one, twenty-two. When even Mikael was like, oh, Michael was like, oh, and you're dancing and you're making a fool out of it. You know what I mean? Paraphrasing, but, you know, she's just kind of like has a strange fire in herself, which is jealousy and envy. Mm. And so sometimes we, I'm not going to say sometimes maybe, you know, I have possibly been in that situation as the Michael, you know what I'm saying? And the father had to, close thy womb, you know, or, you know, and vice versa, you know, just different things in, I, in everyone's life. We all had the situations, but all I and I can say is uh, sisterin or Wyndham or sisterin, don't be the Michael, you know what I mean? If your partner's in it, if you're listening, uh, and if you're on the in the new covenant, study with the partner, bring them on, make, them, make it part of the family. If, uh, if that partner says, yeah, okay, I, I'm not going that way, but I might just give a testimony. I might know some Bobo dreads that his, his partner seriously said, your God is dead. Now, for the I and I, that would have been done. Now, right now, the brother decided to stay with the partner, and even his life is dead. You feel? So, you know. Uh, can we show can we please? <laughs> okay, we don't need no background music. Go sorry. So, um, so anyway, so that's also... Just on this, even as we trod with our, our king men and our uh, sister wives, let's never be a Mike, Michael, Michael. Let's never, never that, never that. So that's all I have to say. Give thanks and uh, Wendell family, I and I love you. And there's some gifts coming for ones and ones. If anyone got some, look out for some. So yes, I am. So much love. Shalom. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. Mika, 
You fell. No. <laughs> um, Michael, Michael, can you hear? I? Can you can you hear? I? Um, let's try attention about uh, Michael, Michael. Um, and the Holy Spirit just sent me quickly to the metaphysical Michael, right? And then Michael, the metaphysical, her name means brook. It means um, a rivulet. It means a shallow well, a, a turbid stream, but also it can mean who is perfect because Mika means one who is like Mika. It can also mean completion. It can also mean perfection. Now, um, long teaching on this, but to hopefully inspire the item to check out, read Michael's story. In other words, read the whole relationship with David and what happened. Because remember, she was Saul's. Saul's yeah. uh, daughter, and she did look out for David. Remember when they got married, and Saul sent the hitman on on David's wedding night when he was in bed with Michael, and how they hid the teraphim, which is like a, I call it like a, a, a the teraphim was an image, was like a kind of, you know how we have like a a, a a coat rack or like something to put our coat on or our armor on. But but it's like it's like um it's 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 like a the shape of a man in a sense. It's called a terafin. A terafin. We could go into that at another time. Anyway, she put it in bed and and had David. And when Saul's hitman came in and stuff like that, they would ask him think bed and then so you why are you tripping? I'm paraphrasing. Like, why are you going to marry me to this man who she loved? She really did love David. And after David run, you know, David was on the run for a moment. Um, he married her to somebody else. So David came back, or David came forward, rather, after, you know, Saul vonk out and everything happened, and now time for him to move forward in his anointing. Because he was an anointing. Saul was anointed. David could have killed Saul, but David had regard to the fact that Saul was the Lord's uh, Moshiach, as he was the Lord's Moshiach. That's an interesting that they both were the Lord's Moshiach, but the Lord's Moshiach was an ant was, that was Saul because he wanted yeah. to kill David. <laughs> but David could have killed Saul, but and he, people, his his face, told him, hey, this is your time. And he says, I will not, you know, lay his I will not anoint him at the hands of Saul. I thought that was just so profound. But my point was that her, she went through in a sense. Yeah. Because she was, she loved David on the wedding night, you know, while they're doing wedding night things, Saul sends people to, to kill David, figuring that, well, and not to say catch him with his pants down, but it's, it's it's something like that, something really foul that that Michael's own father, her, his, her, her own fleshy, did, right? And then married her off to somebody else. But when David came back, one of the first things he'd said was like, where's my wife? You know, he wanted his wife. And he went and sent people to get his, force her back with him, you know, because it felt uh-huh. that was wrong. But now you can tell that she she must have really been, you know, through an emotional ringer, in a sense. But now she was Saul's youngest daughter who loved David, became his wife, 1 Samuel 18. Saul afterward gave Michael to this guy named Palti, or Paltiel, who was the son of Laish, right, to be his wife in 1 Samuel 25, 44. Remember what Christ says? About divorce and all that, you know, yes. this was yeah. this was a different twist. Saul had a different twist on it, and later she was restored to David in Second Samuel three twelve to fourteen. But metaphysically, Michael means an intuitive quality that is active in the human soul, and mm. becoming for the time being a cleansing and inspiring stream of pure thoughts and emotion to the preserving of the love thought. The love thought in this context is David, is David. 
This thought mm-hmm. has not, at yeah. this stage of unfoldment of the individual, attained the ruling power in consciousness. Mm-hmm. David didn't have the ruling power in consciousness. He was still growing in his consciousness, although he was anointed. I, we are in the anointed Christ in his kingly character. We still are growing, right? Because of the adverse activity of the personal will. The personal will represents Saul. So I am liable to agree with the eye on that, not to be a Michael. But it's like uh, Michael's bad is not her experience. You feel sorry for her in her experience. You know, almost like from man to man by her father. You know what I mean? But, yes. And what you touched on was her 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 pure heart. Now, heart she became sour. And while David is dancing and giving you know giving praises, she just looks on the fact that well he was maybe a little bit immodest. Some people even say that he he danced so much until he was almost naked. You know, saying uh-huh. for the Lord for the for joy, not for. You know, not to say, hey, look at me, look at me, what not like that. You know, he brought up, you could say, in the morning, as it was, you know. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and jealousy was to the handmaidens. You know, I mean, you know, were to the other women who, who were around. They had no relationship to David. They absolutely had no relationship to David and probably would not have had any relationship to David but yet she would say what she said, and let me just quote this right here. And 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 this this is the part that I think really did her in. It was her mouth. Exactly. Then David returned to bless his household. Now remember, David blessed everybody. <laughs> you know, it was blessing everybody. And my point before about the blessing is this right here that we we don't bless Hila Salome. We don't bless Jah. We say that he is blessed and we bless his name. I could go through yeah. that in scripture. There's a there's a key difference because Hebrews seven seven says yeah. and without all contradiction, the less is by the better. The less is blessed by the better, right? Now, David went to bless Israel as the king. Israel and food by the he, he we say he, off, right? And then everyone went back to the house. Now, after he blessed everyone with theirs, he's now going to bless his own household. So he didn't uh, bless his household first. He didn't hit off his own household. He first hit off the, the people. Then when he uh-huh. returned to bless his own household in Second Samuel six twenty, Michael, the daughter of Saul, and, and I think it's interesting that they mentioned Michael, the daughter of Saul, more attached a fleshy relation, even though her fleshy relation did her bad. You know that way that she's attached to her fleshy relation because she's the daughter of Saul. And instead of today, that's what the Holy Spirit is showing right here. Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. Notice that. She came out. Out of where? The house. I wonder whether her neck was rolling. Anyway, and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today. Now she's going to be sarcastic. Check this out. Who uncovered himself in the eyes of the handmaidens, his, the handmaidens of his servants, as one of those vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. You know, the vain fellows, if I'm correct, it is um, Belial, Belial, or in modern English is Blair, like Prince of Blair. Belial is another version of Belial, which basically means worthless. It's almost like saying the Batima, basically. Like saying, you know, to say how hard that saying is. Can you imagine? He says that he uncovered himself as one of those vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. And now David's response is also telling. He says, before the Lord. It, they, they have yeah. a, it is, but the, the it was is italicized. So the real reading of it was before Yahweh. He's, hmm. She's saying it was done in front of, she's looking at people. She has her eyes on people, 
and not her eyes on the Lord. So she right. sees what he was doing was in front of people, the uh-huh. uh, daughters, you know, other daughters. You know, she's concerned with other daughters, right? Uh-huh. And he replies, before Yahweh, which chose me before thy father. Uh-oh. <laughs> Well, and before all his house to appoint me ruler, this is where we get the idea of elect. Elect of God actually means appointed also to appoint me ruler over the people of Yahweh, over Israel. Therefore will I play before Yahweh, and I will yet be more vile than thus. In other words, if you think that I was being vile, you understand, I'm going to free up myself more. And, and, and praise and joy in God's way, truth, and life, and will be base in my own sight. This is key, too. He's not looking at how he's looking in his own sight. You see what I'm saying? You remember with Nadab and Abihu, it has a will worship. It's a show of wisdom. You know, the basis is looking at the people. It's like looking at flesh, but not looking at the iron. He's saying, listen, I'm going to be low in my own sight. I'm, I'm, I, I think of myself, remember David's psalm? He says, I'm a worm and no man, you know? And of the handmaids which thou hast spoken of, the, excuse, me, excuse me, of the maid servant. Because remember, uh-huh. she, was, she, she was, see, if he was being so base, he, it, it really, if he was so, 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 so unseemly, obscene, you, you shame yourself in front of everybody. You would not just say you shame yourself in front of the daughters. The maid servants, he says, and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. And then it says that therefore Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to date. Wasn't in you, spite that she came out with, because she's still defending her father's house. And I will leave the eye with this. Leave the eye with this word right here from the royal wedding psalm, the coronation psalm, the royal wedding psalm, right? And it's Psalm 45, right? And Psalm 45 has a word to the, to the daughters and also to the sons, to our souls. Our souls are like the daughters, if you understand, if you understand that. In this psalm right here, Psalm 45, verse 10, it says, it says, hearken. O daughter, that's here, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people, the fleshy, and thy father's house. Verse 11, so shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. Now, it's no doubt that Michael was probably very beautiful, very attractive. You see what I'm saying? But notice, she didn't hear. She didn't consider. She didn't incline her ear. She didn't forget her own people, Saul, and her father's house, Saul, right? So the king, so shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy Lord. He is thy Adoni. What does it say in, in Peter? It says, if you are daughters of, of, of Sarah, as Sarah called Abraham Adoni, for he is thy Adoni. And worship thou him. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. You know, and you know, the last point is, I love that story of Abigail. You know, if you can go to that, you know, first Daniel 24. Later on, she, like, yeah. uh, uh David afterwards. So maybe if you can expound upon that, you know, later some other time. That yeah, would be really so Abigail. Abigail. She was a sweetheart, and she prevented a murder. <laughs> yes, she, she, prevented, she, she prevented a, David from committing a mass murder. A mass murder, you know, when she came and she brought food. Ain't that something? There's a maid servant. There's a maid servant that was like, "Yo, my king, my husband was sipping hard and I, yo." And then, yo, I love Abigail. I mean, and she was wise too. Abby. When she went back home that night, she didn't say nothing. Uh-huh. The boy was having um, what's his name? The dad? What's it? The dad? What's it? The dad? Nebal? 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 No, Nebal. 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 We put dab on it. Nebal. 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 Neb
I'm it's another. Right. This is the I same. I'll get it over there. Hold on, it's up. Nabal. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, Nabal. All this, all this nah, nah, nah. Yeah, the, Nabal and everything. Nah, nah. Yeah, and yeah, you know what? Let's let's expound on that because the Wendem did remind I about the, the Nashim and the Sanui. the daughters of Zion, for the daughters of Ethiopia, you know, and yeah. we do need to touch on that. But this area right here is is a good lesson because this speaks of the modesty of the heart, the modesty of the feelings, the modesty yeah. of the emotions. It's not saying that she couldn't have no feelings. You know, she could have been like, oh, man, you know, these women got to see my, my man, you know, like that. But she could have handled it in a different way. You know what I mean? In the house, in the home. Because sometimes you're yeah. putting it out in the street. So that is a good point. They won't put it out in the street. That's and exactly so what happened. We complain it. Yeah, next thing you know, your sister will be with him. Wow, and there's a murder. <laughs> she walked out the house. She walked out the house. She walked out. She came out. Out of where? She came out of the house, and no doubt she was in the she was in Zion's courtyard. Zion is David's house, the palace. You know, she was exactly. in the courtyard, so no doubt everyone heard that exchange. You see what I'm saying? No yeah, doubt everyone. It wasn't that she she could have waited and you know and just reason with them. The room, <laughs> put it down in the bedroom. You feel me? Sorry, I was just being real. We're all mature now. Just like wait. No. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. On that particular level, and, and she was angry, no doubt. But she should have been angry for her own fleshy, in that sense. And because That's she did right. not right divide that, you know. Yes, um, yeah. So, so she. Oh man! Thank you, my Abigail. sister. Abigail. <laughs> Abigail. 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 Abby. Now, is there a connection between the Abby and Abigail? You know, the Abby with the old time English, blah blah blah. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. The Abby where ones and ones would be safety. The king would be safe in the Abby. And I, I don't know if there's a connection, but you know. Well, 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 well as Moses did, and as the Lord says, search it out. <laughs> I got lots of homework. The the king read. I already got homework, and I'm a little behind on. So oh, right, I'll I'll see that. That. We're looking for okay. that. So so let's arrange yeah, maybe a daughter's reasoning or something. Study study to show myself approved. Don't skim through. Don't cliff No, Don't YouTube. Don't read. Don't listen. Study. So you know you can use all that, but at the end of the day, keep it steady. So I and I will study. I that's what we That's her able to find. If I can get um, a couple other daughters who are interested together, maybe we'll have a reasoning on some of these because uh, I've learned more about actually even sisters, mothers, daughters, and wives from the scriptures than I would have never, ever learned from anywhere else. So perhaps we can have a reasoning on that as well, my sister. Just one thing, hey, I, and I sister Nikki G. Nikki V is up for the – so, Woman Wednesday, so you hear it live and direct. So, we ready, brother, the Wadi producer, ready for Woman Wednesday. Okay, here's the number. Here's the number. Here's the number. Get seven. Get at least seven if the eye can, including the eye itself, to be All on right. the reasoning. So, that it, it, hopefully with the reception, it can have more distribution for other sisters, mothers, daughters, daughters of Ethiopia, daughters of Rastafari. Is I she? Ethiopia, too. Yes, I am. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Shalom, Rastafari. <laughs> oh, shalom, Bless. Sister, Sister Emmanuel. Uh, a blessed component of I and I gathering. <laughs> Give thanks uh, for, for the blessed <laughs> words of my sister. Yes. Yes, I. Yeshua. And the oh, king man. Nice. The Wyndham and the king man. Yes, I. Yes, I. Shalom. Shalom. And I give thanks. Yeshua. Shalom to the eye. And um, yes, I will we'll put that. We'll seek to put that in motion as well. That, uh, you know, because woman Wednesday. And let me bring sister back on. Hold on, sister. Sister Emmanuel, hold on one second. I got lost. All right, there you are. 
so yeah, we that's uh, as the Rebbe mentioned, yep. it'd be a blessed if you can get seven. That'll be that, that's a blessed number, Rebbe, and that's seven, a, uh, seven is perfection. So I and I want to give thanks to you and His Majesty, the wind of, and I and I blessed King Man, you feel. So I give thanks to His Majesty for keeping I patience and waiting. So yes, I. Oh thanks. yes, I give thanks. Uh, and, and 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 love and shalom to the I and the I family. Uh, I will give thanks and, and also to all of our and I sisters who are uh, gathered. As I mentioned before, Sister Ide, Sister Deborah, uh, Sister Monique, Sister uh, Sister Roma. We didn't get to link with the item, but I know the item is the, the item actually is still connected. And but anyway, we have a few minutes left, and uh, let's see if we can push forth and bring forth the fellow disciples that are. Gathered, we have. We don't know how long we have, but we seek to uh, push forth as if we have uh, the full hour. So, um, let's go forth and bring forth some of my brothers and sisters. Again, uh, I want to let me bring forth. Um, I'll bring forth Brother Dawid first, and uh, and then also I want to link with I and I Wyndham uh, Mandela, uh, Brother Haile Yesus. Um but Brother Dawid, if you're there, the family greets you. Yeah, shalom to the eyes. Stay nice, Lynn. Good things. Greetings. Uh, greetings and uh, shalom, uh, brethren and sisters. And it's good to hear one to one's uh, voices. Uh, I give thanks in uh, the name of uh, our big brother, Yahushua HaMashiach. Um, it's been a uh, blessed, strong um, Testify Tuesday um, that really uh, Influence my strong, and uh, I just want to give thanks. You know, um, having uh, friends and and uh, ones and ones that you can count on. Just uh, uh, I give thanks. But looking into uh, this week's um, um, study, looking at Leviticus uh, nine and uh, reading on about uh, what was. Uh, uh, okay to eat, and what and what what was not, and um, so going through that, and um, it, it talked about the uh, locusts, and, uh, and then I was thinking about uh, John the uh, John the Baptist, and uh, John the Baptist, um, uh, honey and uh, locusts out in the uh, wilderness, and uh, he was uh, uh, obviously, uh, um, in, in, in Matthew, looking at it, you know, it says, in those days, John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one was spoken of by the prophet Elias, Esaias, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way, for Elohim make the path straight. And the same John had this remnant of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him in Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about the Jordan and were baptized, for in him the Jordan confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned ye to flee from the wrath of to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham our father. For I say unto you that Elohim is able of these stones to raise up the children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not f- forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And... uh um, that's kind of what I uh, linked in the day, um, looking at um, um, Torah. It, it, was just, it was just a beautiful, strong. I give thanks and uh, um, much love, uh, host, uh, for all that uh, ones and ones is going through. 
and uh, everybody just keep uh, let's keep an eye on the prize. Uh, ja Rastafari. Oh, Amen, 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 brother Dawi. Yes, sir. I thought that I was gonna gonna um that was a good that was a that was, that was a good word sound there. You pointed about the locust, and I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, I heard some people try to explain it away and say, well, he John didn't really eat locust. There was a kind of uh, a plant that was named locust, you know. But yes, sir. That, that didn't make so much sense to I. But then when 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 you mentioned what you mentioned, I went and did a quick look, and I saw in in Leviticus eleven two two, right? Yes, eleven point twenty two. It says, even of these of them ye may eat the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper. Yes, to his kind. Now, I know many of us might be like, oh, man, you know, we don't eat that. But what, was, what is consistent here is that John the Baptist, even in, in eating his meat or his food, because meat there doesn't always mean meat. It's, just a, it's an old English term that means food, edible something. And his meat or meal was locusts and wild honey. And then you find right here within the cash root or the old, I call it Old Testament ital, right? In the Old Testament ital, it was um, permissible, right, to eat uh, locusts, right? It was permissible to eat locusts, um, and here's the evidence in uh, Leviticus 11.22. So yes, I. in hearing the eye, um, I give thanks because um, that was a kind of a reason I had some years ago other than I was trying to say that it was it was a type of plant that was I call the locust plant. It wasn't really the locust because whatever what the Torah, what the glory, what the word is saying is very clear. Yes, that was one of the permissible, um, you no. Know, Kind of interesting there, but um, nothing that we have yes, to eat, you know. But just it's just kind of interesting if, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, I. I. <laughs> yes, I. He uh, he baptized with uh, water, and uh, that uh, it was just an interesting uh, little uh, tidbit that the Holy Spirit led me on. Um, like I said, uh, it, it was a wonderful, strong um, ribby. Um, I give thanks. Amen. And I and I give thanks for the I and I and I give thanks for the giving of thanks. Give thanks, my brother. Shalom, Master Farai. Shalom. May Jah grace, bless, and, and keep all the I and I in this strong and in many more strongs to come. Yes, I. Oh, a lot of a lot of blessings, a lot of words sound, a lot of positivity, a lot of love. I and I give thanks. A lot of thanks for giving in. Uh, uh, Brother Dawi, give thanks for your fellowship and for the ice kind words again. And um, you know, oh, I feel the love, my brothers. You know, it's, uh, you know. Hopefully, as the ice said, it's been a blessed strong. Hopefully, all the disciples have had a blessed strong. And if you haven't, you have another opportunity, another strong coming up. Well, we're already into it. Uh, we're into the first day. But um, again, give uh, give thanks, Brother Dawi. And uh, I know the I um, as the I as we have you here. I know I know Brother Justin is also here as well. Uh, from the store, and uh, he made the link saying that he uh, he got the word from from you from from Brother Dawid. So yes, I um, yes, I yeah. The brothers uh, the brothers are here now. No, we're into the last segment, and so uh, if if ones were disconnected, they weren't able to come forward. So I just wanted to shout the I and and Brother Justin, and hopefully, um, you know, within the reason to come, we can get to the I and uh, you know seek out how that connection was come about and. You know, the brother was also, you know, has so perhaps there's a testimony unlocked in there as well, and perhaps in Testify Tuesday. But give thanks uh, again, Brother Dawid, and um, you know, show him to the I and the I's family, and of course, the I's newborn. You know, don't forget about that. I, you know, give thanks about that. Hopefully, you know, hopefully you've, been, you've adjusted. <laughs> hopefully, you're getting some rest, my window. Yes, sir. Yeah, as well uh, as the uh, Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Give thanks again to the I, and um, you know. Um, 
their continued support and also, you know, all the ones who uh, hang on with us. I know we're, you know, we, all, all of our overdrive sessions are going to, you know, really late, early in the morning. And so uh give thanks to all of our disciples are still up and, <laughs> and uh, are still willing to share uh, the blessed words on. And I uh, just, uh, you know, I, and I feel love and I give thanks. So give thanks, Brother Dawid. And we're going to push forward and see if uh, we can bring forward. And we, have, we do have a blessed number of brothers uh, and sisters who are gathered here still. And uh, within about the last 30 minutes, hopefully, I'm willing, we'll be able to get to ones and ones. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so let's bring forward, I, um, I want to bring forward the brother, uh, brother Mandela, brother Hali Jesus is also here. So I want to link the brother. Um, it's been a long, a long time since we've been able to touch base with the brother. And, um, you know, I know that's probably much that has happened between uh, then and now. So brother brother Mandela, if you're there, uh, brother Hali Jesus. Shalom to the other family, Gistia. Shalom, greetings. Say nice to link. Shalom. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, I right. So it, it seems you might have gotten, uh, might have got my lines crossed there, my brothers and sisters. Uh, all right, we're gonna push for it, and uh, <laughs> that was a little bit of a mistake. All right, I, I will seek to. <laughs> Seek to rectify that. Uh, it's a little bit of a blunder there. Anyway, uh, give thanks, my brother. Let's go to the UK and, and bring forth one of our and I fellow co-laborer and uh, fellow disciple, brother Aaron, um, all the way in the UK. Um, give thanks, my brother, for being here. The family greets the eye. Shalom. Greetings. Yes, sir. Salam, family. Yes, sir. Salam. To all the eyes, sharing and caring and loving. I and I. After the the little incident with Nadab and Abihu, Moses mentioned the, some words that Yahweh spake. So they must have been to Moses privately. He said, I will be sanctified, and then that come nigh, and before all the people, I will be glorified, and the Lord held his peace. So it's as if Moses was explaining that. But be careful. This is why it was on. It was in the and um, the word for sanctify is Kadesh in the Hebrew, and the word for glorify, glorified is Kabad, Kabad. And uh, I'll just read a bit from Genesis chapter fourteen. Uh, Chapter 14, verse 14. And when Abraham, Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he harmed his, harmed his trained servants, born in him. 380 pursued them to Dan, and he divided himself against them. He and his servants by night and smote them, and pursued them to her hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the minister, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Shur Dilemma. And the king's widow of Shava, which the king is ale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God, Yah Rastafari. I will, um, yes, Lord, lead to the eyes, reasoning on all the parts, and especially like Yadon says, when the Yadon is the, the age of grace, and the Dab and Abihu, not in that age, the, the fire, and also Lid is, um, I can't remember exactly how he said it, but it's like there's a few verses, verses of scriptures where it's like, Ears they have, but they don't hear. Mouth they have, they don't speak. Eyes they have, they don't see. Um, hands and our whole family. Uh, hands are don't handle. Oh. 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 oh, yes. Leviticus 10 and 3. I'll be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Mo and Aaron held his his peace, or he was 
And you know, he didn't hold his shalom. He he basically was silent. That's interesting that the eye, you know, points that, you know, pointed that out right there. And um um yeah, the age of grace because you know, grace the age of grace, uh, how can we say? Um before judgment there's a trial, you know? And we are you know, in the last sessions of that trial, you know, but we're in that that trial, you know, go through that, hold on to that silver, that redemption, you know, and and as the silver is purified, even even seven times in the fire, may that that redemption, that faith in the redemption of Yeshua Hamashiach, also purify I and I, so that we will. We will be that 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 sanctification that will glorify His name in I and I respective works, not like those idols or you know eyes they have and you know see not and ears they have hear not and hands they have and handle not, and those that make them be just like them. But I and I present the living sacrifice, I and I bodies. You know what I mean to the service of the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. And give thanks, my brother. Give thanks, man. And thank you for, for reminding me. I, I heard that while it was being read, and it just had a ring to it, you know, the connection of holy and glory. And then if you look in the New Testament where Christ gives his high priestly prayer, he also touches on those two themes of of, of holiness being set apart and then of the glorification, you know, of being glorified. And, and and bringing glory to his name. Amen. Amen. Ah, well, salam. I'll be very happy to be studying along with the family during this portion, Shemini. That's how it's done, Yon Ken. Yes, I. Amen. Amen. Ah, well, yes, I give thanks, I know, and them, Brother Aaron, all the way from the UK. Uh, been a strong ambassador in INI's uh, video compilations, uh, Discipleship Radio on the YouTube, as well as many others. The brother has a, a blog, agricultural blog, and um, fellow artists as well. A lot of things, the brothers, and also the uh, Facebook group for ones and ones. Um, I know we have quite a lot of ones in in, in the uh, in the fellowship discussion uh, nowadays. But and I and give thanks to the brother for for reaching out and and, and making those connections. Um, I give thanks, my Wendem, uh, Brother Aaron, uh, for the eye, and uh, I seek to reason with the eye as well uh, moving forward, but um, on the sidebar, perhaps. I give thanks to Brother Brother Aaron. We have about, hopefully, we have about another half an hour left to push forward and bring forth um, some of our brothers uh, that we have gathered uh, here still. Uh, as I mentioned before, we had a little bit of a blunder just now before uh, introducing uh, Brother Mandela, Ali Yesus, and uh, there was a little crossover in, uh, in, the, in behind the scenes here, and so uh, it was actually Brother Ayerson that, <laughs> that we linked with. And anyway, uh, but Brother Ayerson is also here. I know we had we had missed the opportunity to link with the I uh, from the early uh, Rasfari Midrashim, Rasfari Talmud, and the WordPress. Uh, the family greets the I, Brother Ayerson. Shalom, greetings. <laughs> shalom, 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 Wendum. shalom, family, shalom, Rebbe. Uh, yeah. All praise be to Abba Father Kedamali Haile Selassie in Yeshua name. And uh, yeah, this is a very Chabad or heavy, uh, it's been a, it's a heavy Torah portion with a lot in it. Um, it's interesting uh, the, uh, that the Rebbe brought forward uh, the verses from Deuteronomy about uh, eating, you know, eating our portion as priests uh, before Abba in and through Yeshua with with uh, joy, because uh, in Deuteronomy, you know, it speaks about rejoicing um, while we're eating. So that could be, you know, I'm not saying that that's a definitive answer or anything like that, but just studying that is the word simcha, which is uh, joy, or I think it's uh, samech in, in the Hebrew now, um, depending how, how it reads. But uh, also just... Um, it's also very interesting because I don't know if this was brought forward the call drop before, but uh, in this portion, it's actually um, we've come to like the the 
the midpoint of Torah, of the Torah studies, and the way that the Torah is divided, and this goes also, this, this ties in with Simcha also, because uh, it's speaking about, uh, before just linking it with the uh, instructions or the mitzvot, um, I think there's a confusion sometimes about Torah and the mitzvot, the, the instructions or the commandments, ordinances, but um, just to, you know, maybe it's a brief testimony, um, but uh, the the Torah is, I don't want to say split in two, but the way it's divided in the Hebrew, it's Dorash, Dorash, which is uh, actually when Moses went to inquire or seek diligently. And it's interesting, too, because it would be in this ch- chapter, it'd be, uh, it would add up to eight. The verse. Let me try to see it real quick. I can just grab it. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. It would be verse sixteen, chapter ten, verse sixteen. So that would actually one one and six would be eight. You know, not to go on to all that, but. In the Hebrew, it says that Moses diligently sought, and the two words diligently sought is darash, darash, and that means to, that would mean to like really to study, to study the word, and speaking about, about the mitzvot, to really understand them, or the instructions to really understand them, the way I've been able to, myself, to really, um, you know, chew the cut on it, and also put it into action, it's, it's it's uh it's beautiful because his majesty always taught us that um you know religion is just a set of rules to prepare people for spirituality but we're able to once we're able to kind of like link in or 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 um uh, perform those perform those those instructions with joy and come and start growing into the 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 spiritual to see the spiritual application of torah and why because um, I think in the Essene Gospels it speaks about um, the law of life, but also to bring us closer to that, um, you know, as we practice these mitzvot, is not an end in itself. It's not like, um, and it's not even just a bunch of rules and regulations. It's really to see the spirit behind it, and you know, it kind of <clears throat> led me to further understand um, Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 2, verse uh, 14, where it says, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things ordained in the law, these these having not the law are a law to themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Because um, it's just interesting, like, you know, once we're able to apply this spiritually in our life and act according to it, you know, we could, it, it's pretty easy, like we're protected. I think that's one of the things that also connect with the Harbinger, the Harbinger video, because, I mean, it's like fractals, like when we, when we, when we crush it up and, and are able to really see the word, the living word, it's fractals and, um, we're able to see when someone is actually out of order or not in order. And, I mean, it's practically applicable in every aspect of our life because it's the living word of the creator, of our creator. And, you know, I'm not saying that every mitzvah or every instruction we're going to get, you know, exactly right in the letter, but to start practicing them, like, I'm able to, I mean, this is only by his spirit, not by by my own way of seeing things, but... You know, seeing when someone is actually fulfilling Torah without even knowing it sometimes. But, um, yeah, not to take up too much more time because I know this is, uh, there's a lot in here, a lot of meat um, to chew on. Not a lot of meat, a lot of meal, a lot of mecha with, uh, whole, you know, hopefully anointed with the oil. So, yeah, give thanks and shalom, family. Hello, hello, shalom. Shalom, Lyndon. Um, I also want the eye to also be in the attendance since I brought up the point about the Nashim. Sinud, Sinud, or the Sinud, yes, I. Um, but on the point that you made, which just just to just to um, echo it for a moment, um, 
Romans 2 and, and, and 14 and 15, just thinking about what Proverbs says, that every word of uh, Elohim, of Haile, of Haile, of Elohai, of I and I power, of the first power and the power of the Trinity, every word is pure. In Proverbs uh, 30 and 5, which teaches that every word of Jah is pure. So even in just the quotes that you made, at least the quote that you made from Romans is so interesting when you mention about verse 14 for the Gentiles. That means non-Israelite Hebrews that didn't go to Sinai or didn't get Torah or didn't get any sefer of any of any covenant or nothing like that, which have not the law. They don't have the instruction. They don't have the teaching. When they do by nature the things that are contained in the Torah, the teaching, these not having the teaching or the instruction are a teaching and instruction to themselves, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. This kind of connects with Sister Emmanuel when she mentioned and reflected the word about um, no longer in the new covenant will they say no Yahweh, to no Jah. So it's not saying to ones and ones, you got to know Jah. But really, the question is, or the reasoning is, what do you know about Jah? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what is your testimony, you know what I mean, of Jah, of Yahweh, of Yahweh, truth and life. But here's the key. I think this is an interesting key right here that we can um, um, meditate on, ruminate on. It says, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else, uh, uh, meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. This is interesting. It's teaching something about even the psychology of man. Like you said, it's not it's about the rules or regulations, but it's about the living spirit of it. So you, mm-hmm. you, you meditate on this verse here, and it says that the conscience, our, and, and, and break down that word conscience, con or cone mean with. The other con mean against, but this cone mean with. And science actually means knowledge. Mm. So conscience literally means with knowing. You know what I mean? So it says their conscience also bearing witness. Our conscience bears witness. What does Abba Father says? That anyone who suffers a guilty conscience is never free until he makes what? Peace. Shalom. Right? Yeshua is our shalom. Until he makes peace with his conscience. So our conscience bears witness, and in that witness, our thoughts, they either accuse us, you know, guiltiness, rest upon them conscience, right, or else excusing. So even in this verse right here, if you would meditate on it, you know, in the context, and then some of the key words, what's it, every word? Even that phrase, the conscience bears witness. You know what I mean? And we all know in our conscience how our conscience, with knowing, you know, bears witness, right? And our thoughts can either accuse us, you know what I mean? Whether it's a right accusation or not, but this is how it works. You know what I mean? So this teaches us not just about what the Israelites, the Israelites were revealed the, the inner workings of the Almighty. You see what I'm saying? In other words, we revealed it in clear word and, and detail and with miracles. But mm-hmm. even other nations and other peoples have access to it. You understand? In their nature, in their hearts. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it means that the judgment for Israel, <laughs> you know, to whom more is given, right? Mm-hmm. More is required. And the next point that you made that I thought it was interesting to just echo it was from you talking about the the tithes in Deuteronomy about about eating of the eating of the tithes. Right, eating of the tithes. Isn't it interesting uh, that mm. actually the tithes are eaten by those who present it? Oh. See, this is why I'm not meditating on these things. I said no. Is you, you can the gifts and offerings to the ministry? Yes, but. Not tithes, not in that sense, and not in this dispersion. One can do it as 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 a free will, but it's not what is commanded. You know, what is permissive will is not imperative will. But uh-huh. the point that you brought out was um, 
was joy, not to eat. You know, not to eat the the, the sacrifice or the offering. You know, you know, was with with mourning. And, and mm-hmm. then that next was the second thing you quoted from Romans that we, I quoted first, and that's talking about the Gentiles, and that's talking about when they do that which is contained in the law. That's speaking about their conscience and what mm-hmm. the king teaches us on conscience of the accusing or the excusing, and it's only when we make peace. But 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 what the Christ says, my peace, his shalom, he, he gives to us, not as not as the world. So that separation of the world and the world way of thinking is what consecrates us. You see what I'm saying? That mm-hmm. coming out of Babylon, coming out of the confusion, you know what I mean, is coming towards that consecration, that being that being set apart, you know? And now mm-hmm. once we're in that set apart and we grow in grace, right, then in our thoughts, in our words, Right, and in our actions, we can bring glory to His name, and hopefully, others will find the way, the truth, and the life before it's too before His grace is done. You know, after grace, you know what comes after grace, right? Judgment. Judgment. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, this is a mercy mission. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, because it, it was a little bit disconcerting when, when you know, understanding the the eighth millennium from. From this Torah portion, but then also this is a little this is this is uh, comforting also in Matthew um, chapter. Not to take up too much time, just one, just a few more verses. Uh, Matthew chapter uh, twenty-four, verse uh, fifteen, and we'll go to twenty-six real quick. It says, uh, "When y'all therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand." Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray, you all know, that your, your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be, except and except those days should be shortened. There should be no flesh saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, in so much that if they were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say to you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. And um, just because I was looking at the Ethiopic date and looking at the, checking the millennium time, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> well, you know, oh, how much longer? Behold, you know? in the heart. Behold him in your heart. Let him reign. As in the scripture says, let him reign in your heart. <laughs> right. And that goes, see, that, I think maybe that, maybe that goes with the with the being joyfully practicing the misfos is almost like being in the kingdom. Like, well, it's starting to feel like. <laughs> exactly. Because what does Judah mean? Judah means the praises of Yah, the praises of right. Jah. Mm. So it says, and those who are in Judea flee to the mountain. What does the mountains signify? The kingdom. The, mount- the kingdom. So flee to the higher height. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, and don't come down. <laughs> and go to the field. And if your flight be on a Sabbath day, now people would think, hey, what does that mean? What does Paul say? Um, that it's not really about the observation of the days. Like some might say, hey, I'm working on a Saturday and, mm-hmm. you know, I want to keep the Sabbath. You keep the Sabbath, that rest in your spirit. Then you say, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know mm-hmm. The rest is in our spirit. It doesn't mean that if you have an opportunity, then do so. You know what I mean? If you have an opportunity not to, you know, work or so forth and so on, but don't condemn yourself. You know what I mean? And when one say that he is Christ or there is Christ, they're pointing to Christ outside of us. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? 
And, 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 and the only place you should really look for so-called, in that sense, Christ outside of us is in his manifestation. We see it in the king, but mainly in the word, because even the king tells us that you cannot come to I except through the door. And who is the door? Yeshua. Yeshua is the door, but that door must be where? Within oh, us. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not without us. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so when you chew on that and you get out of the hysterical Christianity, you know, the Christianity of hysterics, even the part about the woman giving suck, people would think, oh, man, maybe I shouldn't get pregnant around this time. It, it's, it, see, you're looking at it through the carnal mind. How about this? The the, the you remember Hebrews talk about um um milk and meat. Mm. Now when you should be growing in the word, don't be still a babe. You know, giving suck. You know what I mean? On that yeah. level so so there is the way of interpreting the word, you understand, in the spirit. You know, and the spirit will show you the interpretation of it if you are diligent. You know what I mean? To open up, you know, open up your 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 receptibility, right? You know, to his word and to his truth. But my brother, oh man, you're right. This 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 Torah portion has it has so much in it, but yet it's all referential. It's almost like the father is telling us the same thing almost over and over, but he's giving us many different examples of it. And mm. when it and when we and when when it comes down to it, like it's all really about that love, even the fact about the judgment and the and the eighth millennium. I hate to t- not hate to tell the eye, but this has already ended. Mm. This has already ended. <laughs> you know they say that matter is an illusion. <laughs> this has right, right. already ended already. That's why mm. it says that the beast that is, you know, <laughs> but is not. The illusion is kept up by our way of thinking. This is why the more ones and ones are coming in. See more signs. The signs are not happening because Jah just throwing the signs at mm-hmm. once. But as ones are coming out, he is true to his word. So it, this is why he didn't give a day or hour so that he can have mercy to the utmost because he's not willing that any should perish. So, therefore, why are we? If people want to perish, let them perish, but we should not think in our head and heart because then we're getting in a lower vibration, which is not according to his will. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, see, because, like, I think that's part of the, 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 the when, when we were studying Exodus, because it was talking about plowshares, and it seemed like it was, like, grooves that they created in our mind. I think it's the word etom um, that... that mm-hmm. That, that Israel uh, encamped in Etam in the edge of the wilderness, and it seemed like uh, that was before moving forward. So um, uh, I think that'd probably take a, a minute to to really get into. But um, oh, oh, um, well, I'm going to write a note, write a note for it, and maybe we schedule because already we got the Nashim. You know that particular reasoning. If the daughters are willing. Then may 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 ja, you know be with I and I and I and I also so willing. I think it's really so important to make the time to even just bring out specific issues. Even though we know we were touching a specific issue, and we know Ja's word because he has to give a full view. It's going to touch on corresponding issues. But let's just get the subject matter, a particular area of scripture, and and let's find the time and opportunity, you know, to discuss it because. I, you know, you mentioned it, and I want to get into that too. But like you said, right now, right here, you know, this has been a fullness, you know, and most ones are probably in the agitation right now. But as long as they're hearing it, you know, may Jah bring it to their remembrance. Oh, I mean, oh, and, and yes, I and just uh, just as the I said that time check, uh, we have about four, you know, four or so minutes that they allow us. So. Um, with that, give thanks to Ina Wyndham, my brother Ison, and, and again, we will, you know, of course. Uh, more reasoning to come. Um, with the few minutes that we have, uh, if Rebbe, if you want to take us out uh, with the, you know, with the word for the, you know, for the beginning of the strong here, and if I can have a few minutes in the end as well. Um, brothers and sisters, do remember. Um, I, I have a, we have, we still have brothers who we have not gotten to yet. I and I, when them are here, I want to just shout the eye. 
Uh, Brother Hafta Gabriel, we haven't gotten to the eye yet. Brother Hezekiah, uh, also been hanging on the line with us. Uh, Brother Hayal Tafari, education is a key three. Brother Benaya as well, Brother Absalom, uh, Brother Ariel. So there's still quite a lot of us who are uh, still hanging out on the line here. Um, and we, you know, we've run out of time here. But anyway, um, Rebbe, um the mic is yours. Shalom. Um, yes, I. I there? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I. I was going to touch on the psalm for the new day, for the new light, and that's Psalm 27. And in the Orthodox Ethiopian um, uh, tradition, it's the second Tensai, it's the second um, resurrection. So there's like two uh, Resurrection Sundays, and this is the second Resurrection Sunday. But the psalm is Psalm 27. Besamaab, Wallu, and Memphis Kadu, Sahadu, Mlak, Ace, David. Exabi had a step, Yahweh, Katamawi, Halaspasi, Zion, I light, and I and I salvation. Whom shall I and I fear? Existing in Yahweh is the strength of I and I life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even I and I enemies and I and I foes, came upon I and I to eat up I and I flesh, them stumble and fall. Though an host should encamp against I and I, I and I heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against I and I, in this will I and I be ifident. One thing have I and I desired of Exiavi Hill, Staina Yahweh, Kadamawi Halasalase. That will I and I seek after, that I and I dwell in the house. I see all of Exiavi here to stand in Yahweh Kadamawi Halasalasi to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide I and I in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide I and I. He shall set I and I up on a rock. And now shall I and I head. And now shall I and I Rastafari be lifted up above I and I enemies round about I and I. Therefore will I and I offer his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I and I will sing ye. I and I will sing Isaiah to Exiavi the Stain of Yahweh, Kadamawi Halasalasi. Here, Avir to I father, his father, O father of the house, when I and I cry with I and I voice, have mercy also upon I and I, and answer I and I. When the I said is, seek I and I face. I and I heart said to the I, the I face. Exiavi here, Yahweh, Kadamawi Halasalasi, will I and I seek. Hide not the eye face far from I and I. Put not the eye servant I and I Rastafari away in anger. The eye has been I and I help. Leave I and I not, neither forsake I and I. O oh, highly eye of I and I, Yeshua. I. When I and I father and I and I mother forsake, leave I and I, then Exiavi to stay in the Yahweh, Kedamai Hadassalasi will take I and I up. Resurrection. Teach I and I the I way, Abba, and lead I and I in a plain path because of I and I enemies. I liver I and I not over to the will of I and I enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against I and I Rastafari, and such as breathe out cruelty. I and I had fainted unless I and I had amained to see the goodness of Exiavi to stay in the Yahweh Kadamawi Halasalasi in the land of the living. Wait on Exiavi her Yahweh Kadamawi Halasalasi. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen I and I heart. Wait, I say, on Exiavi her to stay in the Yahweh Kadamawi Halasalasi. And may all I and I Rastafari say, Amen. Amen. In the King of Kings. Yes, I.